All right, Shalom. First and foremost, giving our honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Harakak Kodash. Um, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the elect. Brother Yashai, part of Manavala, South Carolina, and I'm um, just coming at you with a quick response to this, uh, brother. Uh, Mayaka Allah, GMS, uh, the LA camp. And, um, you know, he was uh, in transit, and uh, he did a beautiful lesson to the spirit, you know, about the spirit of laziness, man, or slothfulness, okay? Um, this is the brother's page right here. GMS Inspiration and Motivation, which uh, this video did both of those, man, for me personally. Um, but I implore brothers to go and watch it. Very uplifting lesson. Uh, for, you know, things that we all go through, man. You know, because like the scriptures roughly paraphrasing, um, we're all fighting the same battle and we're all going through somewhat of the same things, okay? So any type of ailment or any type of uh, hardship you're going through, hey, uh, you know you have a, a brother, you know, might not be cl uh, a brother right near near you, okay, i.e. in your camp, because everybody goes through different things, but... There's another brother that's going through the same thing somewhere. All right. Uh, this is beautiful, man. So I just have a couple scriptures that I'm going to bring out. I don't want to make this too long, but I just want to, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, touch on a few scriptures that I thought of uh, concerning laziness and slothfulness, man. All right. So uh, we're going to start with the book of Romans chapter 7. All right. Uh, Romans chapter seven and okay, I'm gonna start at eleven. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Was that then which is good made death unto me? The most high forbid, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now, why is uh, Paul uh, saying that? Because um, we are all in this flesh, man. Okay. This flesh is referred to as the chains of darkness. Uh, as pursuant to the, the book of Jude. Okay. This is the book of Jude, chapter 1, and uh, verse, there it goes, verse 6, and the angels, which the angels, it's not talking about the angels, the uh, uh, spiritual angels that are in, in you know, the, the heavens right now, it's talking about the elect. All right, because the word angel uh, simply means messenger. Okay, and the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And we're steadily approaching that judgment of the great day, but right now we are in these bodies, we are in this flesh, all right, which is known as the chains of darkness. So back to Romans, just wanted to bring that out really fast. Um Yeah, um, so that's what Paul was uh, explaining. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but for how to perform that which is good, I find not. So there you go. He's pinpointing the culprit right there, the flesh. Okay. That flesh is 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 hell, man. Okay, uh, you know this this body is death. Okay, but you know how about how Shah uh, defeated death? He defeated his flesh because when he walked the earth in his final form, he sinned not. Okay, so he defeated f the flesh and he defeated death. So um, likewise, the elect being joint heirs to how Shah, okay, uh, is going to uh, do the same thing, man. So we just got to keep fighting, you know. Now, the Lord uh, loves to use animals as examples in certain instances. And right now, he's going to use this uh, 
the ant. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which have no God, overseer, or ruler, provided for her meat in the summer and gather for her food in the harvest. How long would thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? So there you go. Uh, we, we need to be like an ant in this thing, man. Like this, uh, it says, uh, they have no overseer, no ruler, no God, but still provides their meat in, you know, in the, in the food of the harvest. And we're now we're working the harvest right now. Okay, the <laughs> harvest is is re is about to be uh uh ready to be uh what's the word um ready to be reaped. Well, the, you know, the harvest is ready. It's about to be ready, so to say, man. Okay, and the field is the world. Okay, and that's what we're doing. We're um, we're we're we're, we're doing this work. We're plowing. Okay, uh, there you go. That the other, uh, adjective or um, you know, a noun that you can use to uh, describe uh, the work, or you know, is a a uh, it says plow. All right, a man that um, you know, lift their hands from the plow is not worthy. You know, so we definitely have to uh consider that, man. All right. Um, and we need to be on fire for this thing, man. I'm on, I'm talking to myself first and foremost, but you know, a uh, this can apply to anybody. Revelation, whoever needs it. Revelation three and fifteen. I know thou worst that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So the Lord said, hey, because you're not cold or hot, He's gonna spew you out of His mouth. So He wants. Someone that's on fire for this truth, or you just don't need to be in the truth at all, man. You know, and that uh, these scriptures, uh, when you really read them and take them to the heart, they really, uh, you know, teach you, uh, you know, and and inspire you not to be uh, a sluggard. Okay, Proverbs twenty four and sixteen: For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So, you know, you might have days, uh, maybe week. You might not um, be on fire as you should, all right. But hey, man, uh, the Lord says a righteous man follows seven, a just man follows seven times. So you gotta just keep getting up and keep praying to the Lord and do whatever you gotta do to um, get that spirit back. Okay, so uh, I know I'm kind of moving through them kind of fast. Uh, this is the book of didn't want to make this too long. Just wanted to harp on what the brother was talking about. Matthew twenty six. And 41, watch and pray that you either that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you might say, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Or you want to, um, you know, do the works, man. But then it's, it's just not your time. OK, the Lord might have you on ice for a little bit, you know, so to say. He might have you, you know, sit down for a little bit to humble you uh, like the elder apostles going into the, today. You know, um, not being prideful because the Lord can take that that pride that um that that the spirit away from you. You know, even uh He could take the spirit from you if you're a part of the elect, just to humble you down and sit you down for a little bit, so you can be humble. You know, so you always gotta uh have that fear. You know, if you how about you all shot and and you know abstain from pride. Okay, because this is a gift. This is not something that. You know, uh, we got on our own, or we that, or, or we even work for, or deserve. It's something that Yahweh Hashem Yahushua gave to each man. Sev their several ability, like the scriptures say. All right. Since I'm in Matthew, I'm gonna go to the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew 25. Um, Watch therefore, for you need, for you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is a man tra traveling in a far country who called his own servants and. And delivered unto him his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So, you know, every man got their half their talents, which represents their uh the amount of wisdom, knowledge, understanding that you have. According to this truth. Then he that received five talents, went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents, and likewise he that received two, he also gained other two, but he that received one went and digged uh digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that hath received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest me unto five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto them, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou deliverest 
unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto them, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Now this is the point. Then he said, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping what thou have not sown, and gathering what thou have not strawed. I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord and said, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou art therefore to have put my money to the strangers, and then at my coming I would have re received my own with usury. Therefore take the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. So, you know, it can be taken from you um, no matter how low the talent is. You know, uh, it can be taken and given to, to a man that, you know, uh, has a lot of talents. So, you know, you definitely got to have uh, the fear of Yahweh Bashim uh when it comes to everything, including including uh, men in his ministry. But I'm going to end it with this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, not slow, uh, in verse 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So there you go. And this business uh, that we're in right now is the business of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh doing his work, doing his lessons. Serving him to the best of our abilities, you know, um, serving the high holy days, which right now we're in the uh, day of atonement. OK. Um, and everything that comes with the curriculum of serving the Lord, man. OK. Which includes this work. This is the Lord's business. OK. And it says fervent in spirit. Doesn't say lukewarm. Doesn't say chilling in spirit. It says fervent in spirit. OK. And, uh, you know, you can look up that word fervent, uh, but, you know, uh, you should know what it means. <laughs> Okay, so not sloughing the business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So with that, I'm um, giving all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shah, by Shem, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And until next time, peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the elect.